Wheat School on RealAirCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Bread crust is, uh, is, is an important disease in, uh, in southern Alberta and it's becoming a, an important disease in western Canada on both spring and winter wheat. Uh, stripe rust usually infects under cool conditions. So that, those conditions can actually uh, occur in the fall and, and during the spring and early summer. And, uh, and if it, uh, it infects uh, early in the season, then that's when it can do the most damage. Now, it, it causes its, its damage by infecting the leaf and causing it the, these long uh, orange pustules on the, on the leaf. And, and that, those can be particularly damaging, not only because of the, they're consuming a lot of uh, nutrients from the plants, but they also disrupt the leaf surface and, and can cause excessive moisture loss out of the leaf. And that it can also be, uh, uh, that cause a can, can cause a premature desiccation of the plant, and that's where you can really have a, a serious uh, yield impact on uh, the wheat plant. So let's talk a little bit about the situation in central Alberta. It, you, you make a good point. Uh, it just recently, uh, this last week, we've heard of reports of stripe rust uh, in, in central Alberta. This is in the old, uh, old region. And uh, what we feel has happened is, is that stripe rust has overwintered. Stripe rust did not overwinter in southern Alberta. We went uh, looking for it in uh, uh, last month uh, uh, just as the uh, the winter we were starting to grow and come back and we didn't see any signs of it so we assumed that it didn't survive the winter uh, interestingly it survived up in central more in central regions of Alberta and we believe it's because of the snowpack uh, what what is important is uh, uh, that the the leaves that are infected in the fall survive uh, into the following spring and if those leaves are infected with the stripe rust pathogen then it's highly likely that uh, that the pathogen will survive and that blanket of snow insulates the plant keeps it nice and warm and uh, protects the leaves from desiccation and it's that reason that we believe that in southern Alberta it did not survive but in areas further north despite it's colder up there it, it, they did survive because of the uh, snow cover up there. So what kind of conditions are conducive to a, a straight brush type of year? Well it as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the, the conditions that stripe, like, uh, stripe rust likes is the cool, wet conditions. And so what we have in southern Alberta, we're at a higher elevation. And so this, what this causes to do is, is the, evening tends to be, the evenings tend to be cooler. And the, and the cool evenings covered with a, a, a moisture in the, in the atmosphere, it tends to condense on the leaves in the morning and fall, form a dew. And under those conditions alone, stripe rust is very effective because it can germinate rapidly. And in fact, during that, just that, 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 that brief dew uh, period in the morning, and if you have that every morning, those conditions uh, 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 promote the infection and development of stripe rust. And that's why it's such a problem in southern Alberta. Another reason that we often uh, get it in southern Alberta is because much of our stripe rust originates from the Pacific Northwestern United States. That is uh, Washington, Idaho, Oregon, and possibly Utah. And, uh, and then what happens, the, 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 the prevailing winds bring it over. The, their crops are more advanced than we are, so they're, they're, uh, their winter wheat may, it may already be heading now. The, the, their epidemic might be building up, and those spores just move over, and they can arrive in spore showers uh, over the mountains and deposit themselves in, in the south, uh, southern Alberta. And that's where our, our showers, our spore showers come from generally. Uh, there is another series of spore showers that occur 
in Saskatchewan, in eastern Saskatchewan, and there's a, there are new races of striped rust that uh, are, I, I mentioned that striped rust likes to cool and wet, but uh, this pathogen is highly adaptive and it has evolved new uh, races. We call them high temperature races because they like even warmer temperatures. And they've established themselves in the Great Plains uh, of, uh, the, of the United States. Uh, they're over winter in te northern Texas. They move up the Mississippi Valley and they'll eventually move in to Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And those are, those, the, that's a real concern as well for the, the, the production system um, uh, on the on the Great Plains and the uh, and the prairies in general, because those uh, new races can come in and, and infect, and they they um, they can cause tremendous amount of damage. And we've seen that before as well. All right. So let's talk a little bit about control measures now. Um, when should we take action? What should we do? And, and what should we use? Yeah. This is a, this is a really excellent question. First of all, what we we really want to establish from the start is um, uh, it's a, an old friend of mine, Ross McKenzie, who was an agronomist here with Alberta Agriculture, uh, would always say that uh, the, the first decision you make is the most important one. And that is uh, before you go, the crop goes into the ground, which variety are you gonna select? And uh, if you're anticipating uh, uh, diseases, uh, and uh, particularly striped rust, and you should select those varieties that are resistant to striped rust, okay? But let's just say that for some reason uh, you, uh, uh, and, uh, you, you've chosen a variety that is susceptible, then the second step in this, the process is monitoring your fields. We encourage producers to get out in their fields, be familiar with what striped rust looks like, and then determine, go out and check your fields on a weekly basis and see if striped rust is, is there. And once it shows up and you notice it, then uh, producers should be looking at, at control measures uh, because it can be serious, particularly if you have a susceptible variety. But if it's not there, it, it, it doesn't make sense uh, to go out and buy uh, expensive product to put it on uh, the field. But if they detect it in their field, then they should be considering a, uh, uh, the uh, uh, control measures that are available. There are some uh, excellent and highly effective fungicides and we encourage them, the, them to, to, uh, to, 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 to check their, their, uh, their technical reps on that. And, and the important thing about fungicide uh, is, is to, to apply it at the right stage, okay? Uh, timing is extremely important uh, for control of uh, stripe rust, timing of fungicide application. So we're recommending that uh, uh, a week before to a week after flowering is the best time uh, to apply fungicide. If you apply it too early, uh, you, won't, you may not get late season infection control. And if you apply it too late, it, it'll have very little impact on yield. So, so uh, again, uh, make sure if you're going to consider the, f uh, the uh, fungicide option that you apply your fungicide uh, at the appropriate stage to get the best level of control. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you.